So today we're going to talk about something I get asked fairly often, and I'm in a position uh, now with where I work that I can actually talk about it a little bit. And that is, uh, what what do you need to get started in this in this career field? Uh, specifically, like degree requirements. Um, you know, do you need to go to college? Do you need to go to trade school? Do you need uh, professional level certifications through CompTIA or you know any any of those certification bodies and uh, <clears throat> the the short answer is uh, no you don't um, there's up until recently there really hasn't been a whole lot of specific degrees geared towards like malware analysis or reverse engineering um, exploit dev that that type of stuff there's been generic degrees like uh, CS and and just other general I don't know, cyber type degrees, um, engineering type degrees, things like that. Um, those definitely help. It depends on where you're looking to get hired. But for the most part, um, yeah, it, it, uh, your, your specific degree uh, really doesn't matter. And e even if you have a degree at all, um, most places now realize that there really is no degree that points you directly at this stuff. Um, people primarily find it on their own. They find their own way to it, and when you go in for job interviews and things, um, you know, having a degree, it may be a plus, to, again, depending on where you're going, but what the interview process is going to do is it's going to actually test your skills, um, so they really don't, for the most part, don't care what kind, what kind of piece of paper you have, whether it be a degree or certifications, they care about what you can do. And the things that you know how to do are things that you, you can learn in your own time. You can learn from YouTube, you can learn from articles and blogs. You can practice reverse engineering binaries on your own. You can practice crack me's, those are great. Um, you can read and learn about specific architectures, <clears throat> x86, you know, MIPS, ARM, any of those. Um, you need to be familiar with, I, I did another video not too long ago about what uh, programming languages you need and primarily for this field it's going to be Python, C or C++ and some sort of assembly language ARM, MIPS, x86, 64, e any of those as long as you're, you can read through them and understand them and write a little bit in them you're good and yeah other than that um, they'll sit you down in the, in the job interview and they'll generally go through you know some sort of coding thing they'll if you're going for malware analysis or RE, they'll have you do exactly that. They'll sit you down with a, an example binary and have you go through it. Um, they'll also talk to you about your experiences and, and what you like to do on your off time. And for the most part, if if you show an aptitude, you know, even a little bit, uh, for this type of stuff, and you show that you're genuinely curious and want to learn and that you're making strides in your own time to do this type of stuff and you at least for the most part understand the basics and, and that you can be taught and show a little bit of potential then most places will go ahead and hire you on you may be hired on as a, a junior but you will be hired on and, and a lot of the experience will come with you sitting sitting with people and and getting put on a project and, and just kind of learning on the job much like how you learn the stuff in your off time um, with some positions they do require certain certifications um, primarily you're looking at government roles or if you're like a contractor or subcontractor being put in some sort of federal role um, that seat that you may be that they're going to put you in may require some sort of certification level and that's just that's more of a government type thing um, but just working at the at just normal Places, workplaces, uh, contracting offices, things like that that don't sit on customer sites. Generally, those are just the the interview process that I just mentioned. Um, but if you are sitting in some sort of regulated billet somewhere, that that may have some sort of degree certification that they need you to have just to be compliant. But, but yeah, for the, for the most part, all of those other certification bodies, CompTIA and and specific ones like certified ethical hacker or CCNA and all those things those are great to have they look good but definitely not necessary at most places so yeah um, 
I think that's about it. Um, you can certainly look at degree programs at some colleges. They they're very like they'll have specific malware analysis degrees or cybersecurity degrees or penetration tester degrees. Those are all great. Um, they're fine. I've I've interviewed a lot of people who've had those type of degrees, and really, they don't teach you more than anything that you can find online. Um, sad to say, but uh, just just my opinion, they're, they're really a waste of money and time. Um, you can get the same level of experience and knowledge just by doing CTFs and crack me's and setting up a malware analysis lab at home and reading, you know, a, a $40, $60 book that you can buy off of Amazon um, and following tutorials through that. And that, that's primarily how most of us have learned. So if, uh, you know, if you're not in a position where you can go to go to a, a school or go to these really expensive, you know, certification courses, don't fret. Um, whatever job you're in now or if you're high school and looking out not sure whether to go to college or not, if you have the means to go, definitely go. It always looks good to have that piece of paper. But if you're if you're past the college time now and in, in a role that you know you may not necessarily want to be in, or you may be looking at, hey, I want to shift my career path towards this type of cyber stuff. You can definitely learn it in your own time. You don't need to, you know, quit your job, go to school, all that stuff. You can do it in your own time. Learn, show initiative, show curiosity, and. Uh, most of the places that do this type of work will, will definitely bring you on. So I hope that's helpful. Um, it's a little bit ranty, but I get the question quite a bit. And having having interviewed quite a few people, um, just the, the trend I see in, in the different companies that I've worked for and different billets that I've sat in, that that is a very old, old way of thinking is that you have to have that degree to, to come on. And some places do require it. Don't, don't get me wrong, but the vast majority have moved towards, they realize there's no specific degrees for these type of things, and that people need to come on that actually have the knowledge, and that's what will be tested in the interview. So yeah, hope this helps. Uh, if y'all have any questions about this or anything else, hit us up at ringzerolabs.com.